the Grand Canyon, characterized by its stratified bands of red rock, stands out as one of the most remarkable natural landforms globally. It is often referred to as the basement of history, embodying rock layers that symbolize distinct prehistoric periods since the Earth's genesis. Recently, a team of experts delved into research on the Grand Canyon, and their findings promise to reshape history and our understanding of this historic structure. Join us as we uncover the scientists' startling discoveries within the Grand Canyon. Number 10. Unearthed Prehistoric Life Forms In the Grand Canyon, some strange prehistoric life forms have been uncovered. The revelation of these life forms began when a massive rock descended from a towering cliff, exposing peculiar markings. Geologist Alan Krill, on a hiking expedition with his student along the Grand Canyon National Park's Bright Angel Trail, keenly observed an unusual rock with markings resembling footprints. Intrigued, Krill photographed the markings and sent them to his colleague, Stephen Rowland, a paleontologist at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, renowned for excavating the Wuzho Hunting Ground, a 200-year-old butchering site in Carson City. Upon Rowland's analysis of the photos, it was determined that Krill's discoveries were ancient fossilized tracks. Rowland suggested that these footprints dated back as far as 313 million years, making them the oldest evidence of vertebrate animals ever found in the Grand Canyon. The tracks were proposed to belong to an amniote, a hard-shelled, egg-laying animal. The rock, bearing the markings, weighed hundreds of pounds and had fallen from the Monocacacha formation a large outcropping of sandstone dating back approximately 314 million years. The sand played a crucial role in preserving the fossilized markings over millions of years. Further analysis by Rowland revealed that the fossilized markings depicted two distinct reptilian animals crossing diagonally over the boulder. One of the animals measured a foot long and exhibited a sideways stepping pattern. This lateral sequence, where the left rear foot moves successively with the left front, followed by the right rear and then the right front, is a common gait among tetrapods, four-legged vertebrates. While scientists are still intrigued about whether the tracks represent two separate reptilians or the same animal at different times, Rowland's conclusion was influenced by the slightly faster movement of the second set of tracks, indicating a common lateral sequence gait among tetrapods. Despite Rowland's groundbreaking discovery, some scientists view his study as controversial. Mark Niebel, a paleontology program manager at the Grand Canyon, highlighted significant disagreements within the scientific community regarding the interpretation of tracks and determining the age of rocks. Rowland's analysis posed a challenge and stirred controversy as it proved impossible to identify the creature responsible for the tracks. Nebel, however, commended Krill for the find, pointing out that the rock carrying the prints was in a location frequented by many without anyone noticing them. Number 9, Grand Canyon Caves with Sloth Dung Unbeknownst to most, the Grand Canyon's cliffs house embedded caves that contained sloth dung and mummified bats. These caves, varying in size, offer insights into the region's past, particularly during the Ice Age. Would rats, bats, birds, and now extinct mountain goats and sloths found these caves to be ideal habitats due to Arizona's dry climate, resulting in exceptional preservation of their bones? The dry state of these remains allowed researchers to gain valuable insights into events from 40,000 years ago. The Rampart Cave, discovered in 1936, provided piles of dung resembling recent excretions, later revealed to be from a 9-foot-long, 500-pound sloth extinct for over 10,000 years. Radiocarbon dating indicated the dung's age, ranging from 11 to 40,000 years. Plant matter in the feces revealed the creature's eating habits and details about regional plants existing in the landscape. Neat piles of wood rat stumps served as tangible records of undisturbed animal and plant remains in the Grand Canyon for thousands of years. The cave also unveiled the skulls of Harrington Mountain goats, believed to have existed for at least 19,000 years, alongside the Shoshog ground sloth. Additionally, mummified bats, including condors, were discovered in the cave, with some being exceptionally well-preserved. Chemical analysis conducted on the dried-out tissue remnants of the condors by Steve M. Slay, a biology professor at the University of North Carolina Wilmington, revealed that Grand Canyon condors likely fed on now-extinct megafauna. Number 8. The Colorado River is almost dry. 
Originating in the Rocky Mountains, the Colorado River spans approximately 1,450 miles, flowing through deep canyons and rugged terrain. A famous section of the river is the Grand Canyon, where it shapes breathtaking landscapes. The river's powerful force offers opportunities for kayaking, canoeing, and excursions. However, scientists have alarming findings. The Colorado River is on the brink of drying up if immediate measures are not implemented. Environmentalists argue that the problem has been escalating for decades but has reached a critical point in recent years, due to major reservoirs on the river plummeting to dangerously low levels. The construction of dams by western states, diverting the flow into rapidly growing cities like Los Angeles, Phoenix, San Diego, and others, has significantly reduced inflow into the once mighty Grand River. One such dam, the Glen Canyon Dam, has been praised by engineers for diverting the Colorado River, but environmentalists view it as a continual threat since its inception. While the river still flows through the Grand Canyon and boaters navigate across Lake Mead in Nevada and Arizona, the largest reservoir in the United States, the visible rock walls at the lake's edge indicate a water level much lower than before. The Glen Canyon, now 50 years old, played a crucial role in creating Lake Powell. Despite its initial purpose for hydropower, the water levels are now too low to generate power. If this trend continues, the dam's positioning could impede water flow down the river, negatively affecting the water supply for California, Arizona, Mexico, and Nevada. Environmental groups urge politicians to invest in reshaping the Glen Dam's plumbing system to allow sufficient room for water to flow into the Colorado River, safeguarding one of the world's natural wonders. Number 7. Uranium Deposit Found in the Grand Canyon Surprisingly, the Grand Canyon, a spiritual and cultural homeland for 11 Native American tribes, faces the threat of uranium contamination. Numerous uranium mines and mining claims outside the park's boundaries pose a serious risk to this extraordinary gorge. Uranium deposits are deep within layers of sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone, specifically in geological formations known as breccia pipes. The history of uranium mining near the Grand Canyon dates back to the 1950s, with operations like the currently active Canyon Mine, renamed Pinyon Plain Mine. The highest grade uranium mine in the US, it poses a threat to Grand Canyon Springs. In the mid 2000s, a surge in uranium prices led to increased mining activities near the Grand Canyon. A successful campaign by environmental groups, local governments, anglers, hunters, and native communities resulted in a temporary mining ban around the Grand Canyon in 2012. The Havasupai tribe, residing in the canyon depths, relies on springs for various purposes, expressing concerns about potential pollution from mining activities. While a 20-year ban was initiated in 2012, nearly 600 active mining claims persist near the Grand Canyon as of May 2022, despite legislative attempts to permanently prohibit new mining operations. Number 6. The Mogollon Monster A captivating tale associated with the Grand Canyon is that of the Mogollon Monster, also known as Arizona's Bigfoot. Believed to inhabit the dense forest landscape of the Mogollon Rim, the first sighting near the Grand Canyon dates back to 1903. Explorer Ingvald Walter Stevens described the creature as a large, hairy humanoid with immense strength, agility, and the ability to move stealthily through the rugged woods of the canyon. Cryptozoologist enthusiast Don Davis, recalling a mid-1940s Boy Scout trip near Payson, claimed to have encountered a large, hairy creature with expressionless eyes and a square-shaped face and head. Despite anecdotal reports, the creature's existence remains a subject of speculation. Standing at over seven feet tall, walking upright, equipped with at least two-inch-long claws, covered in shaggy hair, and emitting a pungent odor resembling dead fish or rotting meat, this creature is believed to mimic wildlife noises due to its adaptive nature. Reports suggest it produces an eerie sound akin to a woman's scream when in great peril. Despite testimonies from Stevens and Davis, most scientists dismiss these sightings as either bluffs or misidentified large standing grizzly bears. The creature's existence remains unconfirmed, leaving the possibility that encounters are encounters with a creature still unknown to science. Number 5. Grand Canyon Luxury Suite As the Cuban Missile Crisis unfolded in 1961, President John F. Kennedy took precautionary measures, creating a safe haven in case of bombing. 
he chose the Grand Canyon, constructing luxury sweet caves equipped with enough food to sustain over 2,000 people for a month. Although the bombs never dropped, the suite became a tourist attraction. Nestled 220 feet beneath the surface, it is considered the world's quietest, darkest, and oldest underground hotel. This geological marvel, with caverns dating back over 65 million years, retains emergency rations still fresh after 40 years. The suite offers amenities such as a lounge area with a television, record player, beds, and a library. Despite being part of the National Park's attractions, it comes with a hefty nightly rate of $900. Number 4. The Terrifying Creation of the Grand Canyon The Grand Canyon, spanning 277 miles in length, up to 18 miles in width, and over a mile in depth, serves as a geological record spanning billions of years. Its formation began around 70 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period evolving from a flat landscape to the majestic canyon we see today. Tectonic activity and the uplift of the Colorado Plateau played pivotal roles, with the Colorado River carving through rock layers around 6 million years ago. Various factors, including climate changes and the presence of resistant rock layers, contributed to the formation of dramatic cliffs and steep slopes. The ongoing erosion by the Colorado River continues to shape the Grand Canyon, showcasing the Earth's dynamic forces. Number 3, The Case of Disappearing Bodies In 2021, a body was found 430 feet below the rim at Yavapai Point, believed to be that of a 45-year-old Hungarian man, Gaba Berchi Tonse. Shockingly, another body was discovered nearby, belonging to Scott Walsh, who went missing in 2015. His body was found almost 5 kilometers away, blending into the surroundings with undetectable clothing. The Grand Canyon's unique geological history, often referred to as a layer cake, conceals a hidden space between rocks that has recently been explored. This space explains the discovery of bodies that had gone unnoticed, adding a mysterious dimension to the canyon's secrets. Number 2. The Tucson Ruins The Grand Canyon has been a witness to diverse life forms and their unique stories, with the ancestral Puebloans leaving lasting roots. These Puebloans are believed to be relatives of modern-day Hopi, Zuni, and other Puebloan tribes. Data from the two rings of juniper trees, common among Puebloan dwellings, revealed that the Tuzayan settlement, situated a few miles from the southern edge of the Grand Canyon, was constructed around 1185 AD. The settlement comprised agricultural fields, communal buildings, established homes, and religious structures. Archaeologists deduce that ancient life in this area dates back 800 years. The Tuzayan ruins feature a central plaza surrounded by storage rooms, living quarters, and kivas. The plaza faced south to capture the sun during cooler seasons. Living quarters, typically single-story structures made of rock and wood, contained three or four main rooms. Storage rooms held dried food for preservation during harsh winter months. The site housed two kivas, ceremonial structures still used by modern Puebloans for religious ceremonies and festivals. Kivas are circular structures below ground, accessed by a ladder through a hole in the roof. Despite the challenges posed by the Kaibab limestone, which prevented extensive digging, archaeologists from Gila Pueblo excavated the site in the 1930s. In keeping with their commitment, the group promised to build a nearby museum to interpret the site. The resulting museum, initially called the Wayside Museum of Archaeology, is now the popular Tuzayan Museum, a small square two-room building made mostly of stone with some wooden beams, blending seamlessly with the ancient settlement. Since its launch in 1932, the museum exhibits cover the archaeological and modern history of five major tribes within the Grand Canyon, Havasupai, Hopi, Hualapai, Navajo, and Paiute. Number 1. Havasupai Tribe the Havasupai people, also known as the Havasu Bajaja, primarily inhabit Supai, a tributary canyon within the Grand Canyon. It is one of the smallest American Indian nations in the United States, and the only place where mail is sent and delivered by mule. Their presence extends across a wider region, reaching as far south as Bill Williams Mountain and east to the Little Colorado River. Their living location varies with the seasons. During fall and winter, they inhabit the Colorado Plateau at the canyon's rim for hunting and gathering. In spring and summer, 
Havasupai families cultivate the Tonto platform, including Indian garden, cultivating crops like corn, beans, squash, melons, and pumpkins. Periodic inspections of their farms help prevent drought. The tribe's architecture features odd, round-roofed shelters made with thatch, willow, and straight brush. At night, they position their faces to the east, believing it helps prevent nightmares. Having lived for thousands of years in the canyon, the Havasupai people did not encounter any European explorers until Spanish priest Francisco Garces visited Havasu, Canyon in 1776. The tribe experienced Euro-American intrusion in the late 1880s when newcomers explored the trails set by the Puebloans, Havasupai, an ancient Hopi. The Supai people's home gained attention in 1901 when the Santa Efe Railroad opened a path to the Grand Canyon. President Theodore Roosevelt visited in 1903, informing them of the upcoming park establishment and the need to leave Indian Garden. In 1928, the National Park Service forcibly removed Havasupai individuals from Indian Garden. The Havasupai were later granted a 518-acre reservation in Havasu Canyon in 1975. President Gerald Ford returned 183,000 acres of Canyon Rim territory to the tribe, and since then, their survival relies on tourism, farming, and wage labor.